right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego in the United States of America because today I'm joined uh, by Christina Bengtsson who is in Sweden. How are you doing, Christina? Hello there, I'm very fine, thank you. How are you? Very good. And Christina uh, was a military officer, world champion, pre precision shooter, and now a global thought leader. And she's devoting her life to helping others master focus. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today is the importance of focus for organizations and individuals. And this is a, this is a, a theme very close to my heart. I did have a, a company for a while called Focused Revenue Results because I'm a huge believer in, in focus. So, um, uh, Christina, first off, from your background in the military and as a precision shooter, what did that teach you about the need for focus and, and how focus can, can help you achieve goals? Well, actually, I saw the need, um, firstly, before I had left the military mm -hmm. arena and also, so to say, the precision shooting arena. That was when I really saw the need because uh, from my perspective, or from my eyes, so to say, it was like leaving two areas where for me, uh, the ability to focus had been absolutely natural and something mm -hmm. that uh, everyone used and that we saw as a respectful skill that needed to be um, uh, used in an everyday way. But then leaving these two arenas, I met other arenas, the business arena, for instance, and this is where I saw that people have lost something here um, mm -hmm. and i saw a little bit too much of um, fragmentation uh, quick fix uh, short-term focus uh, and even uh, attention addiction yeah and it's interesting because uh you know as i often say on on this channel is we live in a we live in a short we live in a shortcut culture to start with we live in a culture where people will tell you oh, I'm the busiest I've ever been. And I always say back, are you or are you the most distracted you've ever been? Because those are not the same thing. Uh, so obviously the, the message of focus is quite a hard one to get through when people are used to being so distracted and, and so all over the place in the rest of their lives. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that spot on. It's exactly what it is. Uh, and I think of the fact that quite many people contact me, it could be uh, someone in uh, Burma, it could be another one in the United States, it could be mm -hmm. a third one from uh, Aust Australia. A large amount of people contact me and usually in the beginning, they ask me almost like, dear madam, <laughs> please help me, I've lost my focus. But mm -hmm. what they want is they want to become more efficient, and more productive and to peak perform even better. And this is when I say that, well, I can help you with this, but real focus is so much more. Uh, it's actually um, the ability to listen, to learn, to empathize, and perhaps most of all, the ability to uh, dare and to learn to resist impulses and to say no. And this is perhaps a little bit new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you because it's very interesting. Uh, whenever, whenever people hold, say, planning meetings, say a planning meeting at the beginning of the year for the company, people will come up with all these great ideas about here's what we should do. We should do this and we should do that. Uh, and then you, when you say to them, okay, what will we stop doing? And nobody has any and nobody wants to and nobody has any ideas because nobody wants to stop everything they just want to add things to so to your point the i think it comes down to a lot of the time is that people just don't like to make choices and if you if you're focused you have to make choices yeah um this expression that um learn to see what are the distractions and then uh, uh, learn to ignore them Mm. And third, uh, uh, say no. Uh, that's one of the most important uh, abilities to, to have during the day and especially in the long run. And also from my uh, personal experience, I think it's uh, interesting how, as you can imagine, I 
I get invited to quite many different uh, opportunities. Sure. Uh, even uh, could be as we have right here right now excellent podcast <laughs> mm -hmm. it could be a tv uh, program or it could be another kind of interview or whatever uh, and people expect me to say wow you're invited to this please you should say yes of course and they expect mm -hmm. me to say yes and then suddenly i just lay back and i say no i don't have to be there and this makes a kind of reflection within people's minds that here is a person who is working with something which is important to express to the world, because my mission is to uh, help people to reclaim focus on a global mm -hmm. scale. So of course I have to be seen uh, in many opportunities and in many places, but I also want to show that if I am the role model of being in focus, I also must show people that I dare to say no, and that I think, at least two seconds, <laughs> before I answer or before I act. And sometimes I'm thinking, uh, and I feel like asking you, I mean, what would happen on a, on a broader perspective if, if more people uh, dared to think two seconds before they acted or wrote something on, on in internet or whatever, oh. you see what I mean? Oh my goodness, if, if people could pause for two seconds even before they post stuff or whatever and actually ask themselves is this contributing to the world is this really contributing to myself or whatever maybe yeah the world would be a better place but i like what you say about this idea and you have it you have it there on your website is about be strong willed and that's what you're talking about because it's very easy it's very easy to say yes right and it's very and it feels good and sometimes i've, I've had this i mentored somebody who was you know starting a business and that and he he kept telling me all these people who'd said they would help him and they would do all of this and they'd and i and and then they and then they didn't help him and i say and i said to him yeah i said they probably meant it at the time it probably felt good to say it but because that's the reality of how most people operate instead of saying well best of luck with what you're doing i'm not really going to be able to help you because i'm too busy or whatever yeah, which is quite honest uh, as well. I think it comes down comes down to also um, easily expressed, <laughs> like who are you, mm -hmm. really? Who are you? What do you want? What are you good at? And this uh, requires focus. You need to somehow get rid of distractions and to be in a focused mindset to be truly connected to what you actually are and to also respect that and to... Uh, to uh, to feel the value of what you are and if you feel that value <laughs> i think it's also easier for us to uh, to stay on target mm -hmm. and of course also to to say no because uh, i meet a lot of, of persons and i see a lot of persons mm, from all different kind of cultures that are so eager to uh, to go further and so eager to be better and to almost be someone else <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's sad in a way because the true potential that we have as human being, beings is in our cognitive control uh, and in our inner capacity that we actually already possess. Uh, so sometimes I think people lose this connection just because they think or have learned throughout our culture of today that we need to say yes to everything and we need to be seen everywhere by everyone. And um, of course, it's difficult because we live in an attention economy. Um, so uh, and I, th I think it is it is very interesting. And, and I think sad in some ways, just like you said, is because we live in this comparison culture and all the social media is, is just often about com you know, people compare their lives to who they see on social media and what they see. And a lot of it is it's false, but they, you know, human nature being human nature. And it is, I think, I think one of the biggest issues facing people is doing what they think they should do, what they think is expected of them, what they think the rest of the world expects of them, rather than doing what they should be doing, what they really are passionate about or, or whatever. And, and I think that, that often leads people into areas where they're not going to excel because they're not doing what they should be doing. Yeah, right. Um, many people are 
are, so to say, uh, stirred by what goes viral. And then for that week, that's suddenly very important. And then next week, there's something else that goes viral. <laughs> and I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's bad because many of these viral developments are, of course, important. It, it could also sure. be world betterment. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it also shows sometimes how we are losing this uh, track of ourselves and of our inner being, uh, of actually who we are. And it doesn't require so much, perhaps, um, because the ability to focus is, of course, a complicated, uh, complicated sure. thing. Maybe my mission is to simplify it, <laughs> uh, yeah. to tell people uh, to uh, learn to resist the impulses and to stay on target. Um, and it, it's perhaps um, a simplicity is perhaps when I explain um, what I did throughout my sports shooting mm -hmm. career, yeah. the precision shooting career, uh, if I managed to explain to someone how important it was for me uh, to realize that if I give each shot it, or my full attention, and if I do that every shot, and let's say we have 60 shots during a match, if I actually manage to get rid of distractions, to be in a really focused mode with my own power, if I do that 60 times in a row, well, then I will actually <laughs> exceed, uh, no, succeed quite well in the extension. Mm -hmm. So short-term focus is a prerequisite for long-term focus, but we quite seldomly think of that. We just act, uh, sometimes without even thinking, <laughs> if I'm yeah. allowed to joke a little bit. Um, but focus is about getting rid of distractions and to choose the right thoughts among thousands of thoughts. And in that way, you steer your attention with your own power. Uh, and to learn to do that is actually quite of, uh, it's, a, it's a relief. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, can, I, can, I can see that because, I mean, I could see that a lot of people, if you take your, your shooting as an analogy there, a lot of mm -hmm. people would say, okay, I have 60 shots. Oh, I didn't focus on that first one. Well, I've got 59 left and like, oh, oops, whatever. I've got 50 left. Uh, and, and to your point is it's very hard to discipline yourself to say, no, I have to focus on every one. It doesn't matter how many other opportunities or other things are coming up. If I don't give this my full focus, I'm not going to do well with this particular thing that's in front of me. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, it's also that uh, we too easily think that it's, uh, it's hard to focus. We see it as, oh, this is another thing I need to force myself to get focused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we even say that to ourselves and to our friends yeah. and in the sports arena and to our kids. And we say, come on, focus now, um, sharpen your mind, uh, which is nice. I like these expressions. Uh, but I also feel like saying that, no, uh, more or less, uh, it's not supposed to be hard because when you start to to um, search for something, uh, that's when it's getting hard to get. You see what I mean? It's the yes. it's the same um, um, as in a lot of, a lot of um, psychology you know psychology research saying this. So, but we need to remind ourselves about this that focus is actually quite of a it's a relief. It's a, it's mm -hmm. um, a space in which you are relaxed, where you are confident where you are glad, where you feel uh, sharp, and I guess you actually then are sharp. <laughs> uh, and this gives a lot of um, positive, um, positive power that you could use throughout every, wouldn't say every second of the day, but at least many times during the day, which helps you to get both inner peace, but also uh, sharpness and, um, mm -hmm. Um, the cognitive sharpness yeah. people so how, do, so how do you help how do you help people who really struggle with that piece who they when they start to focus as you say they they find it incredibly difficult it's hard work they're so torn because there's all these things like this thing trying to jump up at you or all of these other there's all these distractions and they're trying really hard to focus and they find focus to be stressful as opposed to being peaceful yeah yeah, I, I beg them to uh, firstly lower the requirements. Uh, it's almost like uh, some people that, that uh, ask for my help 
are, are being pressured, pressured just by the fact of meeting the world champion in, in precision shooting and the, and the focus expert. Some people even call me the focus icon. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not sure there is a focus icon, but even I can get distracted sometimes. Even I am definitely very much human. <laughs> so firstly, people need to rea relax and feel that uh, no person can or perhaps even should uh, focus with this high level of, of sharp focus or deep focus um, throughout hours during the day. It's just not possible. It could perhaps, perhaps be a goal in the, in the future, in the extension for a few persons, but it's better to lower the requirements and to learn to see what it is. Many people don't even know what it is to be focused. So mm -hmm. I, I firstly learned them to understand five minutes a day and to realize what true focus actually is. And when they learn to see what this actually is, and when they feel this, because it's more or less a, a sense or a feeling, mm -hmm. then they more easily know how to get there. But um, it depends on where the persons are. Sometimes I actually have to, to start where they are and helping them to structure their day so that they get to this point where they feel that they have become a little bit more efficient, a little bit more productive, and then it's time to make them understand what true focus actually is. And this is where we dig into the deeper stuff uh, and to uh, the, the, the mindset and where I can bring them to, so to say, a more uh, focused way of living. And that's where the, the, uh, the real, uh, what do you call it, gratification comes yeah. in or where it has been implemented uh, mm -hmm. in a more sustainable way, uh, where it affects both themselves and also others. Uh, yeah. You see this typical example, I guess, where um, when if we are having uh, a focused conversation right now, right. even though we don't see each other in, sure. in, in the real world, there is a kind of a focus in between us. And imagine that more people gave um, their full attention to the person they speak to in front of them um, just a little bit more uh, yeah. every time, mm -hmm. every day. That would also help people to, to feel better and to perhaps be yeah. even nicer. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and I, I agree with you because you can tell, um, we, we have a conversation face to face with somebody, you can, you, you can always tell when they have kind of tuned out for a few moments and then they're tuning back in or, or their phone has it buzzed and you can tell that they're kind of glancing down at the phone and they're struggling with not picking it up. Um, so I do think, and, and I like that idea of baby steps, like maybe five minutes a day to find like total focus, because again, unfortunately we live in this world where I'm sure you get people call you up and say, okay, Christina, teach me how to be focused, you know, all day, every day and teach me now. And so by tomorrow I'll be <laughs> completely focused and you have to say, well, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. If I if I would teach people in that way, I would probably not be the focus expert and not at all the focus icon. <laughs> uh, but I, I think also one other thing is important to mention is that um, we live in this intensive world and we live with this uh, uh, attention economy. Um, and we have these, uh, as we often talk about the big firms like uh, mm -hmm. Facebook and, um, and Netflix, those who have uh, their uh, business model to actually have our mind focused on, on, on their platform as long as possible. Yeah. We know this, uh, and I often get this almost like a request that you have to help people to, to say no to, to these platforms, so to yeah. not even log into these um, uh, social medias and so on. But then my way of, of uh, expressing my ideas uh, or my teaching is rather to, perhaps this is because of my military background, <laughs> that start, starting war to war never uh, never turns out very well. So diplomacy is the best way <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to get yeah. further. And, and this is why I would rather express it this way that I would like to come up with the solution instead of saying that this is wrong, this is bad. Mm -hmm. We know research says that it's not the best perhaps, but I also think that in the extension, we will see um, a more humane 
uh, technology. I think, I think I'm, I'm positive in my mindset. So I believe that this is going to happen. We don't need to, to have a yes or no, or we or them, or I'm a social media user and you are not, mm -hmm. and I'm the focus yeah. one. That's not really the case. I think um, there might be others who think differently, but I think that if we could learn people uh, and also young people to know what focus is, and to learn to a little bit better resist the impulses. Well, then we will reach uh, further in this, in this way anyway. Then we yeah. will actually have a strong public who says no, <laughs> um, um, at least a little bit more uh, than we have now, um, instead of just starting a, uh, this is bad and this is uh, better. We, we need a solution from our deeper from our deepest um, mindset to be able to handle this and uh, yeah. i think focus is the way yeah no i think it is because i think it'll naturally lead lead to that if we become more focused and just one last question okay so and this is particularly for people who are who are trying to get focused right uh, as you say even trying their five minutes a day so obviously when you were first shooting you know pre pre precision shooting so if you if you took a shot and you didn't focus properly and it didn't go where it was supposed to go, how and and this is what I'm saying for people who maybe are trying this focus. How did you get yourself back on track for the next shot? How did you make sure that you di this didn't become a snowball and then all of them go all over the place? Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a specific technique which I still uh, love, and that was actually. Um, uh, it started uh, when I won uh, one of the major competitions and I, um, I learned that the mind in, um, well, in broad terms, only can focus on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's where I realized that I could focus uh, if I have all these distracting thoughts and often also negative thoughts and, and even feeling so nervous. Uh, thinking really bad things about myself, <laughs> wondering <laughs> why, why, what have I put myself into? <laughs> uh, all these negative way of thinking, uh, no self-esteem in those seconds, uh, they are of course only thoughts. Uh, and I realized that, okay, the, the brain can only focus on one thing at a time. All right, let's find something in the room. It could be, um, let's see what we have here. <laughs> Here's a scissors, it's called, right? Uh, whatever. Uh, and in the shooting situation, I remember the the beautiful autumn leaf that I saw with playing in the wind, and I gave this neutral object uh, my full attention just for a second, and then that helped me to take out the disturbing, negative, uh -huh. um, irrelevant thoughts. And in a second, I came into at least a mindset where I was as good as I could be not not more not less just me uh, that's a way to 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 try to get from a really crazy <laughs> um uh stressful mind to at least all right choose one thought and let that little thought or that little neutral object uh, kick out the other thoughts that's one um simple tip um yeah, that you could try <laughs> yeah that's that's fantastic i love that that's a that's such a such a great uh such a great piece of advice for people because yeah if you focus on something that's neutral it's easy to it's not easy but you can clear out all the other stuff rather than try and immediately focus back on the main thing that's going to stress you you kind of that that interim step helps you exactly. regain your focus yeah no yeah. That, that's fantastic um, listen, Christina, we're we're bumping up against the end of our time. This has been uh, this has been very fascinating. All of Christina's information will be below this video. But please, Christina, do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Uh, I am um, um, nowadays um, an international thought leader on this theme, the theme of focus. And uh, the reason why I am that is because I have been um, uh, a military officer. And I combine that career by being um, a shooter, an athlete, where I actually also won uh, a world champion title. <laughs> I lost mm -hmm. quite many, I can 
<laughs> honestly tell <laughs> but i do have that credibility so to say i'm at least allowed yeah. to say that hello i am a world champion people seem to like that <laughs> and i feel like i feel like saying that hey i wish you can know also that life is life in itself is much greater than just standing on a podium this is something i want to explain to people too that there is always something more than than what you think is the main goal uh, there is always something deeper <laughs> don't yeah. forget that uh, I live in Sweden, uh, and this is uh, from where I um, I teach uh, people. Uh, I have, uh, of course, these ordinary uh, teaching. I teach at the Stockholm School of Economics. Um, I have speeches. Uh, I have webinars. <laughs> um, I have um, online courses coming up, and my aim is to help people to reclaim focus. And I think this in the extension will actually uh, make uh, world a betterment. Um, besides that, I could say that um, uh, I have a son who's uh, eight years old. Uh, he's autistic and uh, he is uh, probably even more excellent than me to stay on target. <laughs> wow, that's, that's amazing. And of course, you're the author of the book, The Art of Focus. Oh, yes, that's correct. People yeah. like that book. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And available on Amazon. And it'll be in Christina's um, biography at the bottom of this video. So listen, thanks again, uh, Christina Bengtsson uh, in Sweden. This has been fascinating. I love the subject of focus. I love that what you just said about looking at that autumn leaf to get yourself back on track. I'm going to I, I'm, I'm going to personally use that. I think that's a fantastic piece of advice. I hope everybody takes that away. And I hope people go check out Christina's website and her book, um, because we need more focus in the world. We need less distraction, more focus. Thank you. We do. Thank you.